Now let's look at the different musical feature extractor we can obtain. So we will use these operators that have been defined. So basically these levels, uh, dynamics, rhythm, timbre, pitch, tonality. So dynamics, uh, you can compute, so the root mean square energy, the average of the energy. So if you compute that for one file, you have this global energy, maybe it doesn't make much sense. What is interesting in particular is to have the frame by frame uh, uh, evolution of this energy. And this is quite one way of having uh, an estimation of the envelope or the onset detection curve, one possible way. Then from this RMS energy, you can have an estimation of how much in one given musical sequence, uh, what is the ratio of uh, uh, frame with high energy and frame with low energy. For this particular example, if you have this average energy, you see that uh, most of the samples are below the average energy, so the low energy rate was high, whereas for this example, most of the frame are over the uh, average energy, so the low energy rate is low. <coughs> it's, it has been used for genre classification. Um, for rhythm, there is one way using uh, spectrum. So, if, for instance, you compute spectral RAM, uh, decomposing to bands, bark bands, masking effects, uh, so you have a nice auditory model. Then we will consider each band as a channel. As a, Now we will look at the periodicities in each of these temporal um, signals. So if we were using just mere spectrum from that first data, in the logic of mere toolbox, it could be understood as, OK, we already computed that mere spectrum. So what do you want? We just want some post-processing operations. But here it's different. We want the spectrum along temporal domain. So there is a keyword for that, along bands. And you can specify here also the range of frequencies. And you can specify a res resonance curve that I will show an example later, another example. Um, there are some periodicities that we perceive more easily uh, when speaking about rhythm. So this resonance curve will highlight these most per uh, perceived uh, periodicities. And then you can sum back. In the second here uh, representation, we see the spectrum in each line on these red, yellow values show that there is a high, um, strong periodicity for all, all the different channels, periodicity of 7 hertz. And then when we sum back, we have this peak here. No. From the onset curve, so I won't go into de much detail for that. Uh, this is part of a poster we presented last year at ISMIR for uh, pulse clarity, where we tried different models for onset detection, and then also I will show for periodicity estimation. So that's different models that are available in the toolbox for the onset estimation. So again, either RMS frame by frame or similarity matrix based on autocorrelation. It's quite, seems to be quite nice for, for instance, uh, seeing the change of pitches in a violin. It's quite diff difficult to find this onset. And then spectrum, spectrogram, and so on. And also from filter bank decomposition and wrap extraction, and then summation, that, that's a Clapuri model. Summation of the original signal and the differentiated signal. And, and then there are these uh, models already available. It's not complete from the paper that are associated with that. OK, so now we have this onset curve, wh whatever method we use for that. So we can detect the peaks corresponding to this change of note, to this note onset. You can toggle off the detection. You can specify some peak peaking parameters, such as a contrast. You can also detect the attack on the release. And graphically, you will see these 
if you say attack you will see this uh, line here and release the other line we will see later uh, soon uh, some slides about uh, estimation of attack time based on that but first the tempo to finish the rhythm rhythmic aspect so the tempo we had this mere onset now we can uh, find the periodicities from the onset curve based on autocorrelation in particular or spectrum first the autocorrelation curve here so now we have all these channels we have the choice either we sum all the channels first and that computes the correlation autocorrelation or the spectrum or we can compute the autocorrelation for each channel and sum after or also we can sum adjacent channels first and then sum in the end all the these adjacent channels so we, there are all these possible choices <coughs> and then this resonance curve again to prefer most perceived periodicities per tempo most perceived uh, beats so we have two models available and then the enhancement to remove the harmonics okay so this is the tempo so now from the final autocorrelation curve, the peaks, for instance, the major peak, the most important peak, can be a candidate for tempo estimation, for instance. You can specify the range of tempo, the contrast parameter for the peak peaking, and something uh, important in general um, in the mere toolbox is sometimes for particular operators you can have several outputs if you like so for instance for mere tempo the first output is the tempo so for instance if it is frame decomposed you will see the evolution of the tempo but here we see uh, there is something happen happening here now if we have two output using this syntax the second one will be the, the um, computation that has been used for the particular estimation. So here it was the autocorrelation of the envelope. So we see frame by frame the autocorrelation. We see the peaks indicated by the plus. It's not, a, it's not exactly the same example, these two, but th there is the same problem here. We see that one peak was detected in the other uh, periodicity. So we can see what's happening there. Now, uh, as mentioned, what we presented last is mere, uh, some models about clarity of the peak. So there have been other re uh, research literature about beat strength, rhythmic clarity. So basically, from the autocorrelation curve, uh, one thing is that the tempo itself could be a candidate a factor for clarity because faster the tempo may be most easily perceived the beat but that's a possible model but then simply if you look at the actual amplitude of the main peak um, so the max autocore here it will show the most important periodicity so the higher this peak the more there is this periodicity in the signal it's Interesting to see that also the mean global minimum of the curve is also a good estimator for a particular reason related to autocorrelation. <coughs> it means that there is not maybe not too much uh, conflict between periodicities. The kurtosis of the main curve will show if there is clear peak for that uh, peak, mm. for that particular peak. And also the entropy, I will explain later also about this entropy we use to see if there is a clear peak or not in the signal. Uh, so here also we can use on this signal, global uh, autocorrelation curve. Then from the enhanced signal, so removing all the harmonics, we could, could use entropy. And also we have uh, used, proposed another model where we see if we look at these different periodicities and we look whether there is some periodicities that conflict one with the other and have not any uh, ratio, integer ratio, so that make the picture more blurry. 
Okay.